Hi everybody, today we will lead you into a wondrous but dangerous battle with the most devastating invasive species in the world, damaging not only ecosystems, but also crops. This story is about a farmer's battle for survival against a seemingly harmless yet dangerous invader, the wild boar. Join us to explore this journey. This past fall, we witnessed an invasion of feral hogs in a cornfield in Texas. What is especially notable is their tremendous destructive power and how they create riots like never before. Their noses can smell food and bountiful fields. They enter the fields with their cubs to eat the foods the farmers prepare to harvest. We will reveal how carelessness in the planting process can cause huge losses for farmers when wild boars trample or eat crops and seeds before they germinate. It is very easy to see their huge footprints on newly planted fields. They also don't hold back when it comes to destroying cornfields, instead opting for other foods. At this time, we will explore the importance of corn for wild boars. Because of them, corn is an indispensable part of the daily menu, especially in cornfields. This provides the best nutrients and energy for wild boar. Cornfields are where they choose to hide and make their food. They will come and destroy the cornfield from the middle instead of the outside. In the United States, wild boar cause up to 2.5 billion in damage each year. The government is ramping up efforts to combat them, especially during the Texas crop. The number of wild boars is increasing and the cornfields are getting much worse. This puts many farmers in a difficult position. Hunting wild boar in the field is a fun activity and is often done by people who love sport hunting. However, we cannot forget to comply with legal regulations in this process. Texas hunters often sneak in while wild boars are struggling, seizing opportunities and shooting them with precision. Wild boars in the United States have torn through many cornfields and put surrounding neighborhoods under pressure. As you ride your bike in the cornfield, you might also come across a wild boar or two running wild, spreading destruction and trampling on the farmer's property.
Measures such as fences and traps have been implemented, but have not been very effective, as pigs often destroy crops around them, especially during the harvest season. But what about the larger cornfields? Wild boars have caused great losses to corn farmers here when they attack large areas of corn unexpectedly and cause damage to the land or growing cornfields, possibly eating up to 50 acres. To prevent wild boars from destroying cornfields at night, Farmers would organize hunts in their own cornfields at nightfall. To do this, they must have many years of experience in hunting and very accurate vision. Because you can't run away quickly from a scary animal like them, They are very active at night. They travel in herds, and each herd will have about 10 to 20 wild boars. Therefore, it must be very fast and accurate so that no wild boar runs away. On a large scale, wild boar not only destroys cornfields, but can also contaminate water sources and threaten humans, livestock, and other wildlife. They attack and eat anything they see, even the corpses of other animals. They infiltrate the city, rummage through trash cans, and pollute the environment. They go to work freely on the road, making people afraid. Cars do not circulate. The war against wild boar is going on, and we need to find solutions to protect cornfields and ecosystems. You have a better understanding of the threat and efforts of American farmers to protect cornfields from encroaching feral hogs. Let's stand together and take action to protect the environment and this important food source. There are many other invasive species that threaten the U.S. ecosystem and agriculture. How will we face them? Let's continue to another area where the natural landscape is being encroached upon. In addition to the negative impacts caused by the 287 million feral rabbits in Australia, in recent years, Australia's natural and agricultural landscape has also been dramatically altered by the influence of other invasive species, including wild goats, wild boars, wild camels, and the European red fox. Most invasive species were brought to Australia between the 17th and 18th centuries by European explorers and settlers. At the time, these animals were brought to Australia for the purpose of hunting for recreation and providing milk or meat. Animals that escaped into the wild have reproduced and formed populations of invasive species in Australia. similar to how invasive species are controlled in the United States. The Australian government allows people to hunt certain invasive species in large numbers. In addition, economically valuable invasive species 
are collected and sold by farmers to recoup lost production costs. These were the first goats brought to Australia by British workers and miners in the 17th century. They brought them as pets and food. But after many years the goats escaped, all were released into the wild and they established a wild goat population. Today, there are about 2.3 million feral goats living in Australia and they are distributed mainly in semi-arid or mountainous areas such as Western New South Wales, South Australia, Western Australia and Queensland. Like the white-tailed deer in the United States, the wild goat in Australia can also be quite cute. However, the population of more than 2 million wild goats causes great damage to Australia's agriculture and the environment in states such as Victoria and New South Wales. Wild goat herds in Western Australia cause significant environmental damage due to competition for water, food and shelter with native wildlife and livestock. In addition, feral goats also have a negative impact on Australian agriculture. They overgraze on grasslands, damaging crops and reduce farmers' profits. It is estimated that feral goats cost the Australian agricultural industry around $25 million per year, regardless of their impact on the environment or grassland degradation. Goats are also considered to be the main cause of foot and mouth disease in cattle in Australia. Today, the commercial harvesting of wild goats is worth around $29 million. And many Australian herders consider catching and selling wild goats an essential part of their business. This also helps them to minimise the economic damage caused by the wild goats. Australia often uses horses and helicopters to gather hundreds of wild goats before selling to goat meat processing factories. The average male wild goat in Australia typically weighs around 132 pounds and an adult female goat weighs about 97 pounds. The average price farmers get for selling a wild goat is about $13.70. In addition, hunting and trapping are also used to control wild goat populations in Australia. Each year, wild goat populations in Australia are exterminated by a variety of methods. If left unchecked, the wild goat population in this country would double every one and a half years. In addition to feral goats, feral camels are also a problem for Australia's natural and agricultural landscape. It is estimated that by 2022, there will be around 1.3 million feral camels living in Australia, which are present in about 53% of Australia's grassland ecosystems. This includes most of the arid regions of Western Australia, South Australia, and the Northern Territory, as well as parts of Queensland.
in the 1840s, the first camels were brought to Australia by the British to aid in the exploration of the remote and inhospitable parts of the continent. Until 1907, the number of camels in Australia was only about 21,000. At this point, they were not considered a problem. However, with the advent of motorised transportation in the 1920s, camel travel was gradually phased out, and as a result, camels were released into the wild. Although camels are not able to reproduce as quickly as rabbits, they are well adapted to distant lands and without natural predators. As a result, the number of wild camels in Australia has increased steadily. It is estimated that in the early 2000s, the population of wild camels in Australia peaked at around 3.1 million. However, when control methods such as hunting traps and others, the numbers of these animals were more than halved. In Australia, feral camels cause particular problems for people living in the areas where they are most prevalent. They can destroy fences and quickly and completely destroy an area of vegetation by trampling and eating it. They can also deplete small reservoirs of water in arid areas. In addition, wild camels become aggressive towards sheep and cattle sometimes, refusing to let them feed or drink. It is estimated that the economic damage caused by wild camels in Australia is around $17 million per year. Of course, this reported number is likely to be much lower. When hunting wild camels across mainland Australia, currently the most popular method is aerial hunting by helicopter. They will gather wild camels together and then slaughter them. Most state governments and the national government allows people to hunt wild camels in unlimited numbers. It is estimated that every year around 103,000 wild camels are caught for meat in Australia. In addition, between 9,000 and 13,000 wild camels die each year due to old age or other problems, such as lack of food or the harsh climate. To this day, Millions of wild goats and feral camels are still a problem for Australians. Governments and farmers try to control numbers by methods such as hunting or sterilisation. This is the best and most humane way to maintain their numbers to protect the interests of both local community farmers and Australia's native species. So you already know a lot about this wild animal, right? If you like the video, please check out our next video. Goodbye and see you in the next video.